Hello and welcome to my next video on cell division and organization and specialization as well. So cell division. Firstly the big X is a chromosome. The little center bit is the centromere. Half of it, so a small bit and a big bit is a chromatid. And two equal sized bits on either side of the centromere are sister chromatids. A pair of these contain the same genes but different alleles which as you'll know from GCSE are you have two alleles will control one feature <laughs> very exciting stuff that's called a homologous pair of chromosomes the little pie chart is stages of cell division because obviously we need to copy these to get new cells now you have G1 S G2 and M M is mitosis we're all very cl commonly clear with that now G1 is growth one, S is synthesis of new DNA, and G2 is more growth. Now G1, S and G2 together are called interface, interphase. And that takes up most of cell division. And M is mitosis. There's also cytokinesis which occurs. And that's when the cytoplasm divides. We'll look at that a bit later. So mitosis. You have four stages prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase prophase chromosomes condense and become visible each chromosome is made up of two chromatids as i showed you previously centrioles move and spindles start to form metaphase nuclear envelope disappears centrioles reach the two poles and spindle is complete chromosomes are fully condensed and microtubules move centromeres to the equator now as just to go over that a little bit remember centrioles are the things at 90 degree angles near the nucleus if you remember the cells video and then the microtubules will attach at the centromere the center of the chromosome and move them into the middle anaphase centromere split microtubules pull chromatids apart chromatids of each chromosome pulled to opposite poles Telophase. Chromatids are now called chromosomes. Chromosomes reach poles. Nuclear envelope reforms around each set. Chromosomes decondense. And then cytoplasm now divides into two. And that is that last bit, cytoplasm divides into two, is cytokinesis. Not technically part of mitosis, but we'll add that bit in just because it's useful to know. Now here are some badly drawn diagrams of what the stages look like. Prophase, you can see it's on to condense. Metaphase, look for the kind of them on a line in the centre. Anaphase, look for them being pulled apart. You'll see kind of little Vs. Telophase, when they're all at either side. And cytokinesis, when you see the new um, cytoplasm forming. Now you also have meiosis. Meiosis is how... Um, sexual reproduction occurs this is when you have one one gamete and this will spl split into four daughter cells so the main difference is my mitosis produces two cells meiosis produces four mitosis cells are genetically identical meiosis are genetically non-identical unidentical and in mitosis you have diploid cells that's with 46 chromosomes meiosis is haploid 23 chromosomes Meiosis is very important in sexual reproduction because it provides genetic, well, genetic identity. You get different changes. You get half your DNA from your dad, half from your mum. Budding. This is how yeast produces. So this is like single cell microorganisms. So at one, a bud forms at the surface of the cell. Now you can see that little bud there is popping off. The big the little circle has all the DNA in its nucleus. Now, at part two, the cell undergoes interface. The DNA and organelles are replicated, ready for the cell to divide. At part three, the cell undergoes mitosis, just like it does in animals. And yeah, and at four, nuclear division is complete. The budding cell contains a nucleus that has an identical copy of the parent cell's DNA and a copy of the organelles and at five finally the bud separates off from the parent cell producing a new genet a new genetically identical yeast cell 
Stem cell. Stem cells are unspecialized. The best form of stem cell is totipotent. It can turn into anything, and that's embryonic stem cells. We have other ones which are less potent, like ones in bone marrow. Stem cells can differentiate into certain cells. Differentiation refers to the change changes occurring in cells of a multicellular organism so that each different type of cell becomes specialised to perform a specific function. Now, cells could differentiate in a number of ways, with changes to the number of particular organelles, the shape of the cell, some of the contents of the cell, and this is called specialisation. Now, for example, bone marrow cells, as we said, will produce stem cells. You have cambium, which is in plants, and that will produce xylem and phloem, which we'll learn about later. And here are some examples. Sperm cells. So at one, you have the acrosome, that's filled with hydrolytic enzymes, which can break through the egg. You have, now that's, the acrosome is actually a specialised type of lysosome. Now you have the head, obviously. At two is the nucleus. Three, many mitochondria to produce energy, which is needed to move the sperm cell along. You have a at four you have a protein filaments which goes along the whole tail and the whole tail itself is an underlipodium which causes movement. That is, if you remember from the first thing we did, that's part of the microtubules. Blood cells number the first one is a red blood cell, a is a urethrocyte. And number two is a neutrophil. The red blood cells, most important thing, bioconcave. This means that it's got a large surface area for oxygen, more oxygen being able to carry it. Now, neutrophil has a lobed nucleus. That means it can be squashed easily and passed through capillary walls. And three, there are lots and lots of lysosomes for digesting. Root hair, important thing here, long root tip. That's again increases surface area. So quite important with these that you think, is there anything else which could be specialised in the cell to perform its function? Root hair cell. Now, I told you earlier in another video in the cell membranes that root hair cells take in ions through active transport. So think what would be an important feature? What needs? What do you need extra transport? Energy. What produces energy? Mitochondria. So there'll be a large number of mitochondria. It's a good way to start thinking about these. So cells, tissues, and systems. This is organisation, and there's a very generic definition: a collection of similar mm, working together to carry out a specific function. So what's a tissue? A collection of similar cells working together to carry out a specific function. What's an organ? A collection of similar tissues working together to carry out a specific function. What's an organ system? A collection of similar organs working together to carry out a specific function. You don't always need to use similar unless you're talking about tissues. Similar is definite for tissues because you have similar cells in tissues, but in organ systems you don't. You have just a collection of organs will be fine. Now, to give you a little example, in a leaf, a leaf is an organ, and you have you have stomata. Those that's a type of um, you have cells. You'll have the epithelial cells, squamous epithelial, um, basement membranes. All these different cells, parenchyma, xylem, phloem, loads of different sort of things. And these, so you might have different cells, tissues, organs in each thing. If you kind of think of a part of you, you'll have cardiac cells, which form cardiac tissue, which forms a heart, which is an organ, which is used in the organ system, the circulatory system. And yet again, this is another good thing to try and think about rather than me just tell you examples. Think of as many different examples as you can and think how they'll be organised. And that's all. So in conclusion, you have interphase mitosis and cytokinesis in cell division. Meiosis is sexual reproduction. You have differentiation of stem cells, causing specialization and an organization of the cells you get. So thank you for watching. And as usual, comment, like, email me. And thank you and goodbye.